Hello, everybody, and welcome. From that first broadcast, a medium that has been pruned, honed, trimmed, winnowed, chiseled, bonsai, and deposited here today, ready to be moistened with the watering can of evolutionary jewel. This is the Dennis Miller Show. Hey folks, ABC, always be closing if you want the knife set. Welcome to the Dennis Miller Show. I am the aforementioned Mr. Miller. Christian, doing his roadie act from uh, Tom Hanks with Aerosmith. Sybilis, Sybilis, test one, two. Joining me in the studio, live from SNL, Jason Sudeikis and, uh, and lovely Norm MacDonald you know, with a Milwaukee Brewer hat that I haven't seen anybody wear since uh, Harvey's Wall Bangers, <laughs> Cecil Cooper et al. in Milwaukee in the uh, mid-70s. Uh, this segment brought to you by a Google a Day, the popular new trivia game where the questions are so tough you're actually encouraged to find the answers using Google. See if you can solve today's question. Visit googleaday.com. Jason, Norman, welcome to the show, my friend. Good to be here. The, the object of the game is to cheat by looking at the computer? <laughs> well, exactly. It's, it's a Google thing. It's, you see, they've made the questions so intricate, there's no way yeah. for anybody yeah, to know them, true. and therefore they have to use so Google. they have to go to the next level. Now, you know, Zuckerberg says he's only eating his own meat that he kills now. Have you read that? With his bare hands. Yeah. <laughs> Zuckerberg? <laughs> he kid's a monster. <laughs> he tries to do one thing to alter his modern lifestyle every year. And this year, he says he's only going to eat meat that he's actually killed. And I was wondering, what are you adhering to? I'm a vegetarian, a strict vegetarian. No. Have you done that? Well, I eat chicken. That's <laughs> <laughs> not all that it's not vegetarian. Well, I'm, well, I'm not, I said I'm not strict. I eat chicken and Steaks. beef. And <laughs> pork. <laughs> I ate raw game. Did you ever eat? Uh, <laughs> it's not dead yet. No, no, you're over. And you there. eat it, and as you're eating it, their death throes are making you hungrier. <laughs> There's that, nothing. That's better than a soybean. Yeah, you're right. Master. <laughs> Which sounds better, that or soybean? <laughs> Listen, some of the best meals I've had is that uh, Mongolian thing over at Dahmer's on Wednesday night. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, you, we ate a Mongolian. Did I tell, <laughs> did I tell you I ate a, a, a live fish in uh, real life? No, wow. no, no. Yeah, me. I was at a sushi restaurant, and uh, the guy's like uh, Japanese. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I go, I, I eat uh, just sashimi, like uh, raw fish. Mm -hmm. I don't eat uh, with uh, rice or anything like that. Yeah. I'm like trying to impress him. <laughs> so he goes, uh, eat raw, uh, you eat uh, live fish? I go, yeah. Even though I don't. And, uh, he goes, Never think he's going to call you on Yeah, and yeah. Uh, I go, plus it sounds kind of cool. Mm -hmm. And he goes, I, I get you live fish. I go, thanks, man. Like I was an inside guy. And then he brought out a fish and, uh, and hit it and knocked it out and put it on a stick. It was live. And that clears out a sushi bar. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people, <laughs> my, the girl I was in was barfing in a bathroom. <laughs> and the only people interested was the, the guy, the, the <laughs> Japanese sociopath uh, guy. <laughs> And all the uh, and all the Mexican help, they were all like looking like I'd eat it, and so I had to cut it. And then they leave the the the, the fish that's on the skeleton that looks like the one Sylvester found on a mm -hmm. garbage thing mm -hmm. uh, to go to move. It's moving and like a dead bobblehead, and you had to put water in its mouth to keep it alive so you could watch it die as you ate. <laughs> it was a nice meal. <laughs> Jesus, I'm living such a wow. pale life here. <laughs> I mean, you are out there on remember the cutting when you edge said, of tell me, your, remember the joke you did about oh, uh, <laughs> the time that you were uh, you found yourself on your uh, couch with Cheetos on your uh, watching, uh, and you realized you weren't living. Remember, <laughs> Norm, I've told thousands of jokes. What was that? It's the Ricky Martin joke. <laughs> I know, no, I'm whispering you the punchline. <laughs> oh. Well, what is the joke? I, no, okay, Cheetos, I was eating Cheetos no, watching yeah, Ricky Martin yeah, sing. No, 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 don't say that. No, you say, uh, yeah, the other day I was sitting there on uh, the couch <laughs> and I was uh, eating Cheetos watching uh, uh, America's uh, Funniest Home Videos with Tom Bergeron. And uh, <laughs> I realized I might not be leading La Vida Loca. <laughs> you remember that one? 
I love. Wow, I do. I, that, I built my whole career. Are you are that you a Dennis years. Miller cover comic? Now? <laughs> this is like. Well, Dennis Dennis was always kind to me. He gave me my first job in show business. Hey, oh, worst moment go. in my marriage ever is akin to that joke. I'm laying in bed one night with my wife. She's reading Gabriel Garcia Marquez, and I'm watching uh, Dancing with the Stars. And we're in bed, and uh, I, I lean over to a guy. I think. Bruno Tomioli has a new scoring paddle tonight. <laughs> she says, if you ever talk like that again, I'm leaving the marriage overnight. You won't even know I've left. I've got to sleep with you, you moron. How did you notice that they have a different scoring paddle tonight? So maybe I do, do remember, watch Do you remember Leno? Much. Jason's younger than us, so he yeah. probably thinks of Leno as terrible. But, remember, <laughs> oh, but, but so Leno not, was the best, you know, oh, he was and a probably Jay. still, probably you still is the best. remember Drake and him? Yeah, so, so he was probably the funniest, but he had a joke. One of his jokes in his act, you remember this joke? I'm sure you remember this joke. But he'd say, um, he'd say, uh, yeah, I can't do, I can do Leno like everybody else, I guess. I go, I'll try. I've never done him. <laughs> no, I've never go. tried. Sure, it'll be so here. Who's, exciting. Who, why will that come out like? <laughs> so he goes, uh, he goes, it's uh, goof. <laughs> he goes, uh, oh, no, I think it's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he goes, he was on car, you know, when he'd go on Letterman, he'd be yeah. really funny. And he'd go, hey, they got, uh, now that I was reading that the, the number one reading material in all of America is a reader, is a TV guide. Is this considered reading material there, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> TV guide, you know? Is there a guy down there smoking his pipe reading, you know, in his armchair and his wife's like, uh, he's like, I'll be right up, honey. I'm just finishing. Uh, who's the, who's on this week at, on Crosswitz? <laughs> <laughs> you remember show. that night I was at the, we're talking to Jason Sudeikis and Norm's taking us down memory lane but <laughs> so Norm, sorry about that, who needs Jason. Google Norm <laughs> used to write for me at an old show I had for like six months at the mm -hmm. Chicago Tribune I got whacked but Norm and Drake Sather who was a genius Drake no longer with us God rest his soul but uh, he was a genius and a good cat a sweet sweet cat but they used to tinfoil the windows they'd sit in there they would never send jokes out I would stick my head in there'd see be two cigarette lights and they're like fireflies in the <laughs> night I go you poison bastards have anything they'd slide jokes out later but I remember one night I'm with Drake at uh, the improv and Jay was very avuncular then he was like the Potter Familius for the comedic community and we'd come in yeah. in a corn cob hat or, or a corncob pipe and a straw hat, and he would lecture on comedy up in the uh, the attic. And I remember that I'm sitting there with Drake one night, Norm's writing mate, and he Jay goes off in his ten cardinal rules of comedy. You, you never <laughs> save a joke for the next shot. If you have fourteen jokes and they want thirteen, yeah, I mean, you do the shot. best thirteen. You say you don't tell you the, who tell you there's an extra. Yeah, 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 exactly. Get the check. Tell joke. Get check. So anyway. Uh, <laughs> He gets to the end of these ten rolls, and all these comedians are sitting at the hem of his cloak, looking up at him like he's Aristotle and Drake. Says, "Hey, thanks, Jay, but I have a father." <laughs> <laughs> well, was he the best? Tell me a little, Drake man. Drake, Drake and I had the same show. Like he gave us a job, but mm -hmm. uh, Dennis, because yeah. we were just doing stand up. Oh, come on! Can you imagine yeah. that? You luck, Jason. You lucky enough. Years to so my manager, I had, gotcha. a big, I had a manager, I can't say his name, but yeah. <laughs> bombastic Bushkin, right? and he, uh, <laughs> so he, uh, he said, uh, I said, hey, I heard that, uh, and that guy, uh, Dennis Miller, is doing a t uh, talk show, you know, yeah. maybe I could do some jokes for him, I've seen him talk on TV, right? You know? So uh, maybe the, like I've heard they uh, I would always have to tell him like what I'd heard from about show business from watching the, the Dick Van Dyke show years ago. I go, he, he'll probably need writers like Buddy Sorrell. <laughs> so uh, so anyways, they look into it and you have to send in jokes, yeah, like yeah. a big packet of jokes. So like it's about the news, you know. So I n never read the newspaper or anything. So I go to this this uh, Denny's and I start reading the newspaper trying to pick up jokes. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> every every story is real serious. <laughs> you know, and I'm deep into it and getting sleepy and stuff. You know? <laughs> so, anyways, I wrote like ten jokes, and then nine of them really sucked. You know, and there was one like, "All right, one." So I didn't know what to do. So I, I said, to, I found my uh, manager. I said, "Maybe I should just uh, write in this one." You know, send one. Because <laughs> if they look, if he looks at ten, you know, he's gonna go, "Oh, he's yeah. ninety yeah. percent. He's right. horrible." That one was pure, though. Man. That like was it. uncut. But anyway, so I sent him one, and then I got the joke. And then I think people thought I did it on purpose, but I didn't do it on purpose. It was just a, 
No. <laughs> Norman, you're a monster right out of the box. I saw Sadek, I saw uh, Norman do a joke once. You remember the joke about the homeless guy's dog? Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, Could yeah, be yeah. the greatest joke ever what written. I feel sorry for the homeless guy. I really feel sorry for his dog, though, because <laughs> you know the dog's thinking, this is the longest walk. <laughs> <laughs> Does this thing have a payoff, pal? Because I could do this on my own. I remember the first moment oh, I yeah. saw that. I could do this on my own. Thanks for the leash. <laughs> Norman MacDonald and Jason Sudeikis was Now, Jason has a film coming out. We're going to talk about it on the other side of the break. Jason, and, uh, Jason is a guy. Got the sports J show. Jason is a guy I didn't pick from Saturday Night Live to become a major motion. Oh, he's a killer. Why, you, why, you, why not? What come on. Good no, I'm happy kid. for you. I picked Dennis. Oh, I, I thought he was going to be a big movie oh, star. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> oh, no, it's not a bad thing. I didn't pick Sandler. Yeah. I didn't pick Sandler. Well, you know what? Sandler, early on, though, I remember thinking. Because he was in Mixed Nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I, remember, I don't think he's going to be the number one no, box office no, guy. No, but you, you got to admit, early on, there was something that in made a room. quizzical about him. Women dug him. You know, women. Uh, but also in a room, he was hilarious. Oh. I remember he was the funniest. My guy. first year at SNL, you you came back like around Christmas time, yeah, and uh, you came walking into the the office. <laughs> well, don't tell. No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> uh, and you're just like looking around. No, I'm not. <laughs> this is a story where you that's raped someone. That's not a good thing for me to yeah, yell. Nah, no, it's not a good, good thing for me to yell. Don't tell. <laughs> <laughs> More insulting to me than yeah. you think I would. Yeah. Uh, but I, you came walking in, you're kind of like looking around, and, 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 like, and it was Forte's office, and he was in there with Fred Armisen, and it was like their second season, my first year as a writer, and you're just kind of looking around, and, hey, uh, hey, uh, so who's it going to be, huh? Who's, like, you're like, what are you talking about? He goes, who's going to be the big star? <laughs> Nobody here knows. <laughs> <laughs> Could be any, could be none. You just get like stirring it up, then you walked out. Norman, a true original, and Sudeikis, the young pup, will query him and Norman after the break. This is the Dennis Miller Show. I remember seeing these cats do this at SNL that night. That's how long ago I was. I was I was in on rap before rap became wicky 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 wild wild west. You know, you, know, you, know you were good at at Saturday Night Live and Spade was good at. You'd know who was good, you know, instantly, and then you'd uh, be their friends, and then you, you know <laughs> what I mean. And I would, I would, especially with music. Cause what are I, you, Yoda? <laughs> I, I was, no, I only knew old guys. Like I wouldn't know anybody that was in movies at the time, or because Saturday Night Live was always breaking people. Mm -hmm. So the host would be someone that was just in a movie, his her first. Yeah, yeah I worked there, man. I know. Yeah, you know, you know. So, but you would probably know them because you're an actor and stuff. A little bit, yeah, yeah, yeah some of them, yeah. Me, I wouldn't know them. So, uh, so Lauren would go. Uh, Any anyone want to see anyone uh, want to? You know, uh, and so then uh, people would go, "What about Anna Ferris?" And I go, "Oh yeah, I've heard her name." And, I would know. and I'd be like, "What about the uh, uh, Jim Jarmusch? He'd be good." You know? and be, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know who they were talking about. And I'd be like Norm, and I go, uh, "Bob Newhart, <laughs> Mary Tyler Moore." And I'd go, what? <laughs> They're dead. You were in a barbershop. <laughs> you always act like you're in a barbershop quartet. You're the most subversive cat I know. You know everything, Norm. No, I just like old guys. I like where you when you got old guys in SNL. That went yeah. from when you were a kid. Right. Are you not more impressed by them than guys that got? Famous? Yeah, like when Shatner came, I was yeah. impressed. Yeah, and if you, it and was if, Kirk. And if the guy is twenty, you just hate him. Yeah. At some point, some people would come in, and you'd think, I don't, can this kid? This kid could not even get on the show outside yeah, right. of hosting the show. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, no. Yeah, you were with uh, you saw all the big guys because at, at Dennis's time it'd be gigantic stars. The Stones probably at your time or something like that. Yeah, I remember Clapton playing uh, Layla at the end of the show. We'd gone off the air. He turns around, he borrows the electric guitar from the band. You know, it's like one oh five. You know yeah. that feeling yeah, where yeah. you're just wired anyway, and you've had a drink. I, I would have a pop. I met Laura Linney. 
Really? <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what did she have any insight into that no. scene where she uh, makes love to uh, in John Adams? Where, where she makes love to Paul know, this, was, this was before the Laura Lee. <laughs> <laughs> it was in her early days. But there's always those moments at SNL where you just think, God, I'm in the center of the universe. Oh, totally. You know what I mean? Yeah, you yeah. can't believe. I don't know. You're from KC, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm from Pittsburgh. I used to watch the show. Right. And think, what must that be like? And yeah. It's just. Uh, oh, absolutely. Yeah. We. I mean, we had that with Paul McCartney. You know, this last year, I mean, even the, the, the you're talking about like older stars, like having Betty White and Jay Z in the same show is like oh, so yeah. great. It's Good like for it's, her, it's, man. it's like a little a little bit of both, old and new. One time I was hosting and there was three guys. I've never hosted. Was, How many times have you hosted? Just one time. It was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Did it not go well? It was all right. Did you do update? No. That's you didn't right. even right do update. It was right you after didn't... I got fired from update. I thought it'd be funnier back then. But anyways, <laughs> so there was, there was three. There were three uh, uh, guys doing music. You know, yeah. and I don't know music. I just know old music. Like again, Lauren would go, "Who do you like?" And I go, "You like the? You know this guy." Uh, uh, Bobby Goldsboro? Way, way, yeah, Bobby Goldsboro. <laughs> <laughs> well, Eddie, Eddie Cantor, is he around? <laughs> <laughs> and Lauren go, you've got to go, you know. So, uh, so who'd they have on? Very hip So they had, they had hip guys that I should. everyone else knew except me. It was Snoop Dogg. He yeah. just changed his name, and he was angry because I kept getting it wrong. Mm -hmm. It used to be Snoop Doggy Dogg. It was Snoop Dogg at Eminem and Dr. Dre. That's so a pretty me, heavy lineup. Yeah, though. but to me, it was two black guys and a white guy. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I go to introduce them. Ah, you're beautiful. And they're all standing, just trying to get this into the barn. Don't go black okay, white. Okay. <laughs> they were all standing under. They were all standing like, like in. in right there was Francis Farmer. They, they were, were about to go up and take <laughs> me with him. They were standing in uh, rap positions, as you know, like they're, <laughs> like like against. And yeah. I'm about to introduce them. So they're standing in that rap mm -hmm. position where. Yeah. It looks like they'll either start singing rap or pull a gun and, sh and kill you. <laughs> so, uh, so then I go, as a joke, I look at them, because I remember this is kind of a letterman -y thing to do, but I go, fellas, are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> Which forces them to go like, hmm, like uh, sh <laughs> shake their heads <laughs> slightly. <laughs> <laughs> Even though they're in this crazy dangerous <laughs> I'm up. <laughs> yeah, up. So I thought that was funny. But uh, then I learned later they were geniuses and I should have befriended them. Right <laughs> You're a freaking genius, Norman. And that Letterman impression is still one of the most loved. You ever seen his oh, yeah, Letterman? Yeah. yeah. When, you, when you get out of the coat before you finish the last word, look, you can't even take a comma. Look at me. What are you doing? You're going all bubble boy on me. Uh, <laughs> you noticing that he, how quickly he had to take his coat off to get back into the real world right. where he didn't feel phony. It's one of the most brilliant ticks I've, I've seen on that show. Uh, now, Jay's, tell me, what's your DVD? What I do you like, got here, man? Let's do a little commerce real quick. I don't You're the it. only guy I know I come on here I have to extract it out of. <laughs> Everybody else wants to sell the soap. Don't you have something? It's called Me Doing Stand-Up. It's your Comedy Central special, and every caller this hour will receive a copy of it for free. Look but you can that. buy it in stores If it now. sells like uh, two million or if it sells nothing, I get the same amount of money. <laughs> So you're not pushing hard. I don't, I don't make it. No, but look, I get a cut, so we need to sell it. You play best insouciant. And, no, I play, uh, this is what happened. I, did, uh, I didn't ever want to do a stand-up special. I always said I'll never do one. You know? Why? Decided that? Yeah. Because I... Uh, I never wanted to do one. I always thought it'd be uh, fun just to do in the stand, just to do stand up. Yeah, you get a little Andy clubs. Kaufman in you. So then they uh, said, uh, if you do this, you get to go on and do a sport in this uh, show. sports show. show. So you did it. We'll That's talk sports show. Can you guys stay for one more. I want yeah, to talk man. to Sudeikis, Sudeikis about Sudeikis horrible no bosses. Sports. Sudeikis was in sports. You're basketball. kidding me. Oh. Big basketball Danny player. Danny Quisenberry? Did you know he's Who's the only Silent. only guy ever to graduate from the Ewig Kaufman School and play for the Royals? Frank White. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, Frank White, Golden the only gloves. the only uh, graduate of the Ewing Kaufman Baseball Academy to ever play for the Royals. Dennis Miller. The Dennis Miller Show. I'm bringing the sexy back. Yeah. And all the boys don't know how to act. Yeah. Hey. This guy's the single greatest back. comedy yeah. talent since Moliere. So I was telling me during the break. Yeah. Justin Timberlake, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, uh, Sudeikis was holding kid. forth on. Uh, <laughs> Sudeikis kid. was earlier sweet holding kid. forth on Justin Timberlake. Great host. And we were talking about sweet. He's sweet. 
No, he is. He's a no, sweet I'm kid. Not, I saw him. I saw him. Uh, I, I watch. I like. I love. Um, what's his name? Uh, that does Austin Powers. Uh, Mike Myers. Mike Myers. Yeah. His third movie that a lot of people didn't Gold like. Gold member. No, no. Love, it was girl, a, love, girl. love girl. And I liked it. And he was in it. He played a French Canadian accent. You yeah. Know, Timberlake. It was pretty. It was pretty funny. Like that. Uh, like a young Chevalier. I'm talking to Norm <laughs> McDonald, and he loves everybody. And, I love everybody. Uh, we're all. <laughs> you think I'm curmudgeonly? Like I've turned no, no. At some point, I come in. You're like Burl Ives in the, in the voiceover studio for the Rudolph cartoon. I'm not reading this again. Uh, Sudeikis is with us too. Tell us about the new flick here, Dake. What do we got? Horrible uh, bosses. That's the one. Yeah. Boy, look at that. That's no, the doesn't want to plug work. his stuff. He wants what are you, to plug charting everybody's thing? I love that. You got a master board at home? Let's face facts. These kids went by us at the speed of light. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay with it. We're there tied up on the water hazard in the 3,000-meter speech we'll chase. They're all drying at home. <laughs> uh, what's who, who else is in the flick? It's uh, myself, Jason Bateman, and Charlie Day from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. And then, uh, we got I was a, early I was early in early on that Sunny in Philadelphia. I told everybody to watch it from the early right, and who else? Got nothing from it. Nothing. And then <laughs> I, even, I even phoned their agent. I said, hey, that's a good show. Nobody's watching it, but I like it, and I'm, I, I'm in TV. Uh, De De they, they never got back to me. Never did? Never did? DeVito's the EP on that show. Uh, yeah, He's yeah, got yeah. an axe well, to grind with Why? Because of the fist fight I had with Christopher Lloyd back in the <laughs> <laughs> At the improv. <laughs> oh, exactly. You uh, remember the incident. Uh, 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 all right. Uh, uh, Jason Bateman came up to me once. I went to a uh, Parkinson's benefit for yeah. Michael J. Fox at mm -hmm. this mansion in L.A. Uh -huh. uh, this is the first thing Bateman ever says to me. How funny is this? I, I say hi to Michael. We do this pictures, and then I go over. I'm sitting in the corner because I'm sort of ill at ease. I see Bateman coming in. He walks all the way across this huge Gatsby-like lawn and waves to me. I've never met him, but I'm excited because I always dug a rest of development. He comes up, he hugs me, and he looks at me right now. The first thing he says, what's it like to be at a party with both Teen Wolves? <laughs> <laughs> He's so uh, funny. And it went uphill from there. Hey, we've got I met some that guy. Calls. I met that guy, uh, Michael J. Fox. Yeah, and people I, know him. It was He's before a, he was a, a love star. Yeah, it was before it was, it was out that he, was, he had that thing. He has Parkinson. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it was before that. All right. So I met him at uh, at uh, Holly. Uh, what do you call it? What? Well, so I might ask you to go to the black and white thing in around five seconds. <laughs> no, Disney Frost. World. No, it's quick. It's quick. Disney World. <laughs> I meet him. You know, I'm excited to meet oh, him. Lord. You know, so I meet him like ten years later, and here he is. Now he's got Parkinson's. And I go, you remember me? You know, I met you when I was young, and I met you at Disney World and everything. And he goes. Yeah, I just got a thing. I'm not crazy. <laughs> Did he say that? Yeah, he said I'm not crazy. Oh, that's so. <laughs> like, I, was, I didn't mean this. Man, I didn't. I didn't mean that. I just meant. Do you remember? Do you remember Listen, I've got a couple young tykes who want to kiss the ring. You ready to receive this? Or yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You're not gonna flip on these cats. <laughs> Anybody who loves you, you have to torch. That's oh, your yeah. mo. Torch. <laughs> what am I, Jeffrey Ross? Well, let's go. <laughs> let's, go. <laughs> let's go to Brooks in Alabama. Brooks, you're on with Jay. Jason Sudeikis and uh, Obi Wan McDonald. <laughs> Obi Wan McDonald and Mr. Jason, love you both, especially you too, Mr. Miller. It's my pleasure. Thank you. There's a third one. Uh, number one, uh, am I the only one that thinks the new writing on SNL is just not up to par? I've spoke to you about this before, Miller, and I don't get it, man. I just I tried watching, uh, and it's not on you, uh, sir. Believe me, the the guy that's on. Uh, he just reads. Yeah, I just read it. Yeah, it's yeah, but he's in the trenches nice. with these cats. No, Listen, yeah. Brooksy, that, that show goes up, it goes down. I'm telling you, sometimes for it to have an up year, it needs to have a year where people are pushing out and they're seeing who they can, uh, who they can keep, who they can go. But All I, I can tell you is it's an evergreen. You just got to watch it, and there's there's ups, there's downs. All I when know I is I saw a, enough stuff this year that you, I You were in a kind of a golden cast, but when I was in the cast, everybody hated everybody. Everybody hated, like, everyone hated the show. And then you'll see something like uh, they do those specials, Saturday Night Live in the 90s and the 80s or whatever. And there's a lot of camaraderie on the special. Yeah, and then they like show it. the part you were on. They go, everybody, yeah, it was good. Then you go, no, it wasn't. Everyone hated us. <laughs> 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 but they just change it. So you just wait, and then they like you. Because someone else comes along even worse. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. That's what you're waiting for. Very wise. You know, I had Lauren on the other night. I talked oh, to yeah. Lauren. Wait, no. I, I was a nervous awesome. wreck. 
Oh, it's yeah. weird, man. Yeah. I saw a special yeah. years ago about the writers for Sid Caesar. Uh-huh. They're like Larry Absolutely. Gelbart. Absolutely, yeah. That, that's a great special. Yeah, yeah, and they're all like, they become kids right Absolutely. away. They're looking at Sid like he's, you know, the, the godfather. Yeah. And I remember thinking that must it must stay true that Lauren's always Lauren to you. I was interviewing the other night as a nervous wreck. That's yeah, weird. That's I mean, funny. I'm a 57 year old man now. I'm talking to Lauren, and he takes a pause and up just for a millisecond, I think, Oh God, I'm blowing this. I yeah, should say something right. cool. Right. It's pretty uh, pretty weird how when they get in your DNA in one place or your hard drive, it's tough to get them into another place. We're always sort of talking about that, like when doing the movie awards. That he, even though he wasn't involved with it at all, but we had uh, a few uh, friends, a few of those awful writers that the fellow was talking about earlier, <laughs> and. Uh, and just in the back of your head, you just sort of hear Lauren's laugh a little bit and sort of like him sort of, you know, just that feeling of the look that he gives you under the bleachers when your sketch is like either dying or, or <laughs> living or regardless. And you're, you just kind of always have it going on now, which is nice. One time he told me, he's, um, he's like, well, I have Smothers Brothers. I go, oh, man, that show sucked because I remember when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it turns out he did something on it. <laughs> He wrote on it. He wrote on it. Yeah, he was one of the few guys who wasn't on the Starlight Vocal Band <laughs> Summer Replacements. It was like every great comedy mind I've ever met. Where's your first gig? Yeah. Letterman. Yeah. In sketches on yeah. the Starlight Vocal Band Summer Replacement <laughs> Show. Strange bedfellows, folks. 866 509 rant. 866 509 7266. I heard that song was about sex. What's that? Starlight vocal band. Skyrockets. Okay, in you're, flight. it's not. You're not going to win a Pulitzer for this filth. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Kelly in Vermont. <laughs> Kelly, you're on with Norman and Jason. How are you? I'm good, Dennis, and I want to thank you for allowing me on this show with so much uh, comedic uh, genius. Well, if I if I would say I'm, on here, its, I'm here too, I'm here too. <laughs> on its up moments at SNL, it is a great sense of salon. You got to admit, one there time, are nights there. I was in time. that room and everybody was exhausted. Yeah. You know, it was like four in the morning. What do you call this moment? So what do you fun. call this? You would know. You know all these words. What would you call this? This is what uh, uh, the great Dana Carvey did once. One second, Kelly. We'll be right back. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Car- uh, Dan is the best. You know, we yeah, all know that. the best ever. So he in was. My book. Me too. He he killed wall to wall. So that was before me, but anyways. But I was there, and he came one time, and they had Bob Costas do those interviews at one thirty. All right. And then afterwards, he came up to us, you know. He's such a nice guy, but he yeah. said this funny thing. And I don't know what you call this in real life, but he goes, uh, he goes, I was talking to Bob Costas. Guy called me a genius. I mean, uh, Einstein's a genius. I'm telling this guy, okay, woohoo. No, that's so he's com- false modesty. Yeah, you're complimenting yourself, but you're calling <laughs> the other guy an idiot. <laughs> you know, we, uh, Paula Pell, who's one of the great writers that, uh, like, um, there now, like, written a ton of character stuff, has a great term for that called backdoor bragging. <laughs> backdoor like, bragging. And, 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 like, the way it sort of goes at work is like, so I, so I go into Lauren's office, and he's like, you're incredible on the show, but we need you to do a little bit more. It's like, it's like wait a minute, you shouldn't need to tell us the first yeah. part. <laughs> so we, we did backdoor bragging, but that was in the West Village back in the day. <laughs> Come on. Let's, <laughs> Kelly, go ahead. What's up? Yeah, I'm, I'm watching you live on the internet there, and I feel like I'm right in a room with you. Yeah, Wait, is there cameras on it? Yeah, <laughs> cameras right, right, yeah. That's good to tell before you go on a radio show. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> What is, uh, I, wait, I, one I, second, Kelly. i got to jump in uh, again. Spade goes and does a benefit for Lauren. This is yeah. one of the great all-time Spade lines. Yeah. And he's Lauren sent a jet for me. And I always, I, you know, Lauren, a lot of things, but he was a little penurious, at least with our salary I don't know what checks. that word means. He, you know, he, he, P-E-N-U-R-I-O-S? He didn't write blank checks. So when I heard that Lauren sent a, 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 a jet for Spade. Penurious? I, you know penurious. What I mean? penurious. Okay, you know what I mean. No, I, I, don't, said, I didn't. What sort of jet did he send? And Spade said, uh, it was like a CAT scan in the air. <laughs> 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 anyway, what's up, Kelly? How are you? Yeah, I'm good. This could address, uh, you, any of you guys in that room, including Christian, could address this. I was no. wondering, when did each of you feel like you were going to make a success in, in, in the entertainment field? Was it actually before you got on Saturday Night Live, or? Um, well, thanks, Kelly. We'll queue it up with Norman first. Well, Norman? I just wanted to be a. I just wanted to be a stand-up. Yeah. You know, any moment I, I, actually, you look back actually, and, actually, because Dennis, if I think about it, I just this just occurred to me right now. But uh, I never wanted to do anything on TV except write because I was a stand-up, and then I saw. That Dennis did Saturday Night Live, and he was—I think he was the first stand-up to do it. Yeah, that's all I had. In my, you know, I didn't so want. So then to I thought I was a stand-up. I could do this because before that it was all like, 
you know, guys would do characters or some stupid thing. I mean, uh, Chevy was the closest to just being himself, and everybody else would do some stupid. Like everybody else remember everybody remembers Jane, you ignorant slut, but they don't remember the rest of the boring thing where he played an old guy from the fifties or something like that <laughs> with a teletype. <laughs> so I mean, you were the best uh, guy doing stand, and then I said I could do stand up. Maybe I could do that. So that Dennis probably. Jason, when did uh, click on for you that you were no longer a writer on there? What was the first thing you nailed on the air where you thought this could happen? Um, well, I auditioned for the show and then got hired as a writer, so I never got the hand in a packet or anything, so I felt like an imposter for the first two seasons when I was writing. That's the best way to do it. You don't have to yep. go up in front of the stupid... Uh, you didn't have to audition, right? Or yeah, that? sure I did. Uh, they told me, they Let said... Let him finish his story. Yeah. I'll tell you, oh, no, I mean, it was brutal. Not, I mean, and then I just... Uh, gosh, I went in last five episodes of my second year and told Lauren, I was kind of like, you know... I don't know how much longer I can do just the, the just the writing thing. I'd, I'd really love to perform. Wow, good for you. Man. And uh, and then a couple of weeks later, they they put me into the cast, and uh, you know, and that was it. But I didn't really feel comfortable until the next coming back the next uh, year with a like killer, Hater stone and, killer. Yeah, you and Hater, the best things do? on the show. <laughs> me, oh, hey, I had to go up in front Hater's of uh, the, these guys are the two yeah. best. Yeah, I had to go up in front of Lauren's friends. You know that moment. No, where, no. I almost know like you're at the Playboy up on the penthouse with Hefner. Yeah. You're over in the studio eight in H. Times Square, and Lauren says, uh, you got eight minutes. Do you, what you want. Eight eights, you grew up. You don't do stand-up? No, we did a, 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 re, uh, a rehearsal space over in Times Square. Lauren had it. You know, I got Paul Simon sitting there. Yeah, it's that sort of vibe. Right. And I can see right. I had a good moment of clarity where I remember thinking, listen, no individual joke's going to make these people give you this right. show. This is about not freaking out and becoming a kid. Yeah. Just get bulletproof here, man. So I did some, I, I, you know, I had some jokes, but it was more about when the joke didn't work. I, I didn't sweat one I second. I think that's 100%. Like, you see, like, Bill's audition or Kristen's audition or uh, Andy's audition, like, the three people from my generation, and they're all, it's all pure. Me, I, my audition's horrible. I think it's 100% what I did in between. Because we did, I had to follow, we did it at a stand-up place the, fir the first time and then had to do it the, the screen test on, on, you know, on a home base. And the first time was the first time I ever did stand up. And I told this story just on Leno just uh, this week. But I had to follow Chris Rock. Chris came in with mm -hmm. Jeffrey Ross to like try out material for the Video Music Awards, and then I had to follow him. And I just my whole thing was like, well, I'm not going to mention it. But this is the opportunity that if I don't get this, I will be able to go back home to Kansas, you know, and over beers be like, yeah, I had to, I had to follow Rock. That's why I didn't get it. But I, but and that kind of made you a little bit like bulletproof. Like we were kind of like, oh well, hell, this is not this is not supposed to be. Like I had to, you know follow one of the best ever and uh why well, i'd always had worked. the nagging voice in my head that you can't do all that crap all that <clears> neurosis <throat> that anybody brings with them it was the first time i ever heard some champion voice saying listen you asshole are you gonna be glory days your whole life are you gonna mm -hmm. try this go do it don't don't freak out for eight minutes and see what happens so yep. you know it just comes yeah, down yeah, to yeah, that yeah. i would tell any kid out there the worst thing you can do is put fear in the air it's like when you used to or watch wait. the dating game and the guy was given a bad answer and you had to walk out of the room because it was making you so uncomfortable right. say anything stay in the moment if it's eating it concede that it's eating it and yeah. you got a better well, chance the guy tells Great. me like what to do is start stand up and i go you don't wait you know because you know yeah. how you wait because when i first started doing stand up I, I waited six months and i figured it all out what i'd say and i sucked yeah so you may as well just go. Yeah, jump in like and find perf out. Perfection paralysis. Like you're waiting for it to all be perfect. <laughs> no. It's like you're just sitting there. No, 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 I can't it's do it. It's funny. I remember on Saturday Night Live, Lauren said, I said, I said uh, can I be on the show? And they're like, you got to do two characters and two, uh, you got to write two sketches, two characters, and two impressions. So I said, well, I can't do any of those. <laughs> 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 that probably got you on the show right there. It's that sort of attitude. We're with the great Norman McDonald, Jason Sudeikis. Take some more of your phone calls. They've been nice enough to stay here the entire oh, hour. Awesome. Jason's got horrible bosses coming out in the theaters yeah. on July 9th. So and Norm's got Jason. some film called uh, <laughs> I, film? I Am uh, Bob I Crane's film? Mistress. <laughs> and, uh, Wait, that's a Webo up. series. <laughs> Webo. <laughs> Back after this on the Dennis Miller Show. <laughs> My motto's always been when it's right, it's right. Why wait until the middle of a cold, dark night? When everything's a little clear. All right, Starlight Vocal Band. Joined by a uh, third of my favorite comedians, Jeffrey Cesario. How are you, brother? I'm good, my 
my friend. He's in here doing Bobby Walsh show. Give it a check out. Let's take a phone call real quick. We got Frank in Chicago. Frank, go ahead. You're on with Jason Sudeikis, who has horrible bosses coming to theaters July 9th. And Norman and, McDonald. And July 8th. And July 8th. Oh, July oh, 8th, too. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead, baby. Uh, hey, guys. I love all three of you. Thank you. Uh, Thanks. I, I can't disagree more with the guy who called and said Jason's era is no good. I got to tell you a story, and, and, I'll, and I'll let you go, and you guys can talk about it. My daughter, who's 13, wants to be in show business. This kid is hilarious. She breaks me up every week. And the one thing that we love to do, she loves Jason. So she t Saturday Night Live. She gets her little bowl of cereal. She climbs into big bed with her mother and I, <laughs> and, we, and we watch it every week, and he breaks us up every week. Whether it's the guy dancing around in his jumpsuit in the background, <laughs> or it's the newscaster with hater slapping people in the face with the microphone, just... I mean, I can't disagree more. We love it. Yeah, he's like Farrell. He's like uh, Phil. They just hit the ball everything they're given. Yeah, he's oh, yeah, a killer. Yeah. And Hater's a killer, too. Yeah. And uh, Norman, I'm going to say goodbye to you now. You know, I love you, but we're at the end of our hour. Yeah. <laughs> there you That's go. That's what you expect. What... How are the puppets? How's the Holocaust denier puppet? You still listen, working him? Listen, out of context, it sounds bad. <laughs> <laughs> I bought him only yeah. knowing he was crusty. Yeah. <laughs> you had no idea that he denied the very existence of uh, uh, the yeah. final I, I thought he was a curmudgeonly guy. I don't even no. know what the hell you're talking about. Norm uh, does a puppet. I bought a, a, I bought a puppet. You, are yeah, you yeah. familiar with uh, Paul Winfield? Mm, no. <laughs> anyway, during the estate, I got a puppet. <laughs> I probably is that is, did he do like MacArthur? Or was yeah, it, yeah. Yeah, I, he, yeah, I thought he was cranky. He's a Holocaust denier. Yeah, I thought he was just cranky. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis Miller show. Hey folks, welcome back to the Jabber Chamber. That was fun. Live from the SNL archives, Jason Sudeikis, Norm McDonald, brought to you by a Google Day. The popular new trivia game where the questions are so tough you're actually encouraged to find the answers using Google. See if you can solve today's question. Visit a googleaday.com. And like I said, these things are tricky. You want a sample of today's? Name me a moment when Norm MacDonald is not one of the five funniest people on the planet. You better have some agile digits as you get on the keyboard to figure that out. And Sudeikis, a monster over there at SNL, he and Hater, the kids to watch. And a good kid to boot. Well, I feel all young and gussied up and remembering when I, when I was vibrant. The Dennis Miller Show on Westwood One.